Uh, welcome to another edition of Rap Life Sports. I'm your host, Otis Smith. Today we have a special treat. Uh, we have Hall of Famer William Rolfe, former with the uh, Kansas City Chief and the New Orleans Saints. How you doing, Big Rolfe? Doing good, man. It's, it's hot down in Florida, but, uh, you know, we're staying safe. You staying you know, safe? Trying to, good. Trying to keep moving a little bit, but, yeah, it's, yeah. it's warming up. Did you, did your wife come back? I know you said she <laughs> went too far out in the in uh in the water when you said she was in the uh in the water. Oh yeah, she came back. Yeah, she made it back. Yeah, I just I got a little nervous. You know, it was a little shallow in the ocean that day. Yeah, so she was out there about a hundred and fifty yards, and uh and I got a little nervous and I had a little too. But uh, she can't. She made it back. She made it back. But I was I don't. I'm worried about the rip ties, you know. So. Oh yeah, I hear, I hear you on that. I hear you yeah. on that. Well, let me be. Uh, uh, let me once again. Uh, let me congratulate you on uh, making it into the Hall of Fame. And I know you played uh, a long time in the league. Uh, you played football for a long, very long time. So I'm not gonna not gonna go try to go way back to you know high school and nothing like that. But one of the questions I had for you is. Um, how how hard is it to just get to the NFL? Like, you know, when you're playing high school, college, and then you get to the pros like you did. How I think a lot of people don't understand. How how difficult is it really to to get in the NFL? It's really hard. Uh, you know, I ended up going to small school because I was – I'm from Palm – people don't know I'm from Palm Bluff, Arkansas. Okay. I played football and basketball. So when I left high school, I was like 220, 230. Okay. So I was a good athlete, but I played both. So – when I got to Louisiana Tech, we were just going to Division One. So mm-hmm. even for me to get that scholarship, they were really coming to see two guys from my high school. I was all conference. They were all state. And, that, and they ended up offering me after them. So that's how I ended up getting wow. a scholarship. They weren't, they weren't even coming to see me. So uh, Coach Baldwin came down and ended up recruiting them. They both committed. I go to La Tech. I commit. And they both backed out and went to Arkansas State. That's how I ended up getting, going to Ruston. But when I was at Louisiana Tech, we had some real good football teams, real good mm-hmm. coaching staff, and we were excited for guys when they were just getting shot. So some guys, Antonio Brown, Dad, Eddie Brown, we picked him up from Fort Scott Junior College. He got a tryout. Derek Douglas was a free agent. He made the practice squad. Okay. Uh, Bobby Slaughter. So we had four or five guys over the course of that time. Glennell Sanders, they were getting tryouts. None of them were getting drafted. Just getting the free agent shot when they came back on campus to us, that was a huge deal. Wow. 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 Yeah, because yeah. I read I know yeah, you from Arkansas Pine Bluff. Uh yeah. I, I know another guy that uh from, from that area, uh Dante Wesley. Dante Wesley's from my <laughs> my hometown, a yeah. different high school. Good guy. He's from, he lives in Dallas now. Toy Hunter is from yeah. my high school. And people don't know Don Hudson. The f- in the first Hall of Fame class is from my high school, but oh, he, okay. you know we never knew nothing about him. Pine Bluff is predominantly black now. It was, it sure. was interracial back then, and back then you know we grew up on the east side. Dante mm-hmm. wasn't on, but me and Tori on the east side, so that was all black. But uh, uh, you know Don Hudson came through in the thirties, so we you know we didn't really right. know. N- didn't know. We had, right. a, we had a, little, a lot of good athletes come through there. Did uh, you know you know how that, how it goes? They were good and didn't have the grades or didn't have slipping and. We tried to go to junior college and, and and went the wrong way, but but yeah, it was, it was it was very competitive sports. We had some guys going to the Razorbacks, some guys going to OU, and uh, like I said, we, growing up then it was uh, football, and baseball were the big sports. Organized correct. basketball was just coming up, but it was football and, ba- and baseball. You're correct. Was the big I, sports. Yeah, I was a better baseball player than anything, but yeah. uh, I think what I didn't do is is what you did. Which I, I, I kind of segues into my next question, which was the discipline. You know, what if you could speak to a, a little bit as far as from college and why you know you're playing in the pros, how disciplined you have to be. Think what what all do you have to, you know? Well, I would say give up to 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 to, to you know, and and part part of that whole being disciplined. Well, yeah, you know, uh, I, I'm gonna say that. Leaving high school, going to college, mm-hmm. you have to just – you just can't go there and start running and kicking it. And we had guys in college that not taking care of business off the field. You know, the guys that that don't make it – you know, me, I goofed around summer school and had to go to summer school. 
Mm-hmm. I took care of my business as far as working out and all that stuff. What 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 where it happens is guys don't stay disciplined in their personal life. And if you don't stay disciplined in your personal life, uh that that will start that starts to get involved in your in your own field playing and things like that. And not handling your business in the school in the in the in the, in the classes, right. especially will will definitely catch up with you. But if you start partying and doing too much stuff and not taking care of your body, it's gonna catch up with you on the field and off the field. So it's just uh you know, when you get to the pros, it's, it's even tough because okay. when you get to the pros, you're on yeah. your own. You know, you really, you know, nobody's watching you. You got to go to practice. You got to get the rest. You mm-hmm. got to perform because you got you want to keep that contract. So you got to perform. So, right. it's, um, you know, it's hard, but it's not hard. You have a lot of free time in the pros. You have a lot of time on your hands. Mm-hmm. I was close to home, had a lot of friends hanging out. Now, it came a point in time during my career after the 97 season. Right. I had to really become a pro and take better care of myself off the field. Okay. And, uh, you know, Chuck Smith got me that game in Atlanta. And, uh, I mean, in New Orleans in 97. And uh, I went and I, and I was a little heavy. I wasn't taking care of myself that off season in 97 season. And I went to do after that. I made sure I was had my weight right. I was mm-hmm. not, not doing too much stuff during the season that was going to hurt me playing on the field. And uh, that's where guys kind of sometimes get caught up that way. So I say, you know, you, you these guys nowadays, it's way different. You know, you, look at look what's going on in the country, social media. You right. can't go clubbing like you used to back in the 90s. You know, <laughs> so they can't do some of the things we were able to do. So they're forced to take care of themselves. And right. even on the college level now, everything they do, uh, our friend just got drafted from Clemson, Isaiah Simmons. Okay. From the meals to the snacks to the time to the study, everything is regimented on schedules. So they can't – they don't allow them to mess up. Gotcha. You know, they, now when they get to the pros, it's going to be different. But in college, especially big-time college football, right? their schedules are so tight, you you don't have time to do anything. Oh, okay. The, the, you know what? You make a good point. That I, I, you know, I, I, I didn't think about it like that. Like you said, the, the social media is causing them to walk a certain way now because they yeah. know they're under the microscope it was like yeah. you say back in the day you could do something and yeah nobody might not even find out about it whereas now everybody had camera phones and taking pictures and recording before you can get back home the whole world and <laughs> saw what you just everybody, did everybody knows exactly so you gotta or you might get into it with somebody in the club or a girl she posting it you know she telling yeah. everybody you know, you might be in the club, guys might be in a little scuffle or whatever, some some go down, boom, it's out there. So you really they can't afford to do to do that now. Yeah, you're right about that. You right there. Let me ask you this. Uh and I always wanted to ask an offensive lineman this. Uh especially someone especially someone at uh, uh at your level that you competed at. What how how is it on the offensive line? You know, playing uh, out there, uh, you know, on an island like you like you were and facing, you know, different uh, types of defensive ends, you know, guys, you know, trying to, you know, either go around you, trying to do certain moves, come inside. How how difficult? Because I, I think a lot of people don't have an appreciation for what you do. I'm talking about why you're playing. How, how difficult is it to to play that position? Is this? It can, it's difficult, especially more difficult if you don't have the guys around you consistently to help you. Okay. If you have a good, if you, or you're on a bad, bad team. Okay. So if you're on a bad team and you're not moving the ball well, especially if you can't run the football back when I played, then that defense man and them guys can tee off on you or run their games or stunts. The main thing is to get in some type of rhythm where you're mixing up the run and the pass. It makes it easier. And as a tackle on that island, I know sometimes the guard's going to slide to me. I'm going to help. So I can jump the guy outside. Okay. Now, sometimes I'm going to be one-on-one. Now, those are going to be certain down and distance during the game, mm-hmm. usually second, third, and long. But if, you, if you're if you in a good rhythm offensively, it makes it easier. If you got a lot of them long-distance plays and when you got a guy teeing off on you, then you're going to be in for a long day. So it matters who you're playing against. It matters what type of de- defense you're playing against. For the fans, if you're going against a three-four defense, normally they they have a guy over you, then a guy outside. So 
a lot of times the guy rushing is a big guy that's not as fast. He'll play hard against the run, but he's not getting up the field. It's yes. the four three defenses with a smaller linebacker or back when I play, they rotate. So you you be going against two or three different pass rushes throughout the game. They keep them fresh to try yes. to get to get to tie you out because we don't rotate. So Correct. it matters the defense, <laughs> and it matters who you playing against. If it's a big powerful guy that's not as quick, then mm-hmm. I ain't gotta worry about him getting up a field on me. I okay. gotta worry about him trying to rush a twist and I gotta worry about him running over me. So it, it matters the type of pass rusher and what defense they're running to. Well, you you segue perfectly uh, into my next two questions, which was, what is the what's what's the toughest defense you face when when, when you were playing? Uh, you know the toughest the toughest defense we face. I'm uh, so the 49ers, back then we were in the same division. Oh yeah. So them Atlanta defenses were tough. Those Atlanta boys, those Dirty Birds were tough. Uh, the 49ers, that 94 defense, I mean, um, sometimes it just might be a game when somebody got after you. Uh, we went to my rookie year, we went to to to, to Pittsburgh, our first love with 5-0. They uh-huh. beat us. Uh, we went to uh, the Dog Pound, Cleveland back Cleveland. in the day. Right. When, when Belichick was the D coordinator or whatever up there. Right. They, 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 when they had Eric Turner. And they yeah. had uh, Rob Burnett and all those guys. Eric Turner was a real good – I think he passed away, but he's a real good football player. And they had uh, they had some real good defensive linemen. They were tough. So, you know, uh, it, it, it were different teams that you knew you were going to have your day cut out for you. Minnesota Vikings used to play hard, you know, so the Raiders gotcha. used to play dirty. So some <laughs> people play hard, some people play dirty. I you did know, too. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, I, hey, I, I can get... – Listen, the thing about the Raiders, you you could you could look on TV and tell they were playing dirty. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so I know you so I know you knew they were playing dirty on the field. Oh yeah, they were taught to play dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, who was the um and, and it doesn't have to be one player because I know you you have a lot of uh respect for the game. Uh who was some of your uh toughest uh, one-on-one opponents, you know, uh, uh, defensive ends, or even d- if a, if a D tackle, you know, kicked outside for a particular, you know, pass, uh, uh, defensive call. I mean, who were some of the toughest um, defensive know, well, linemen? Uh, obviously, Reggie White. I played him. Yeah. My I had a good game. He was probably one of the strongest I played against. Yeah. Um, uh, Chuck. Chuck was tough. Uh, guys that had power, not speed. DT. Okay. Trying to run around me all day, I wanted that because okay. I had good quick feet. Freeney, I played good against because I, you know, they didn't want to run around me. Guys that I knew could bull me. Mike Rucker, the for Carolina had, you know, oh, yeah. Son Jones had those long arms. Uh, Tim Harris, guys with real long arms. I was, I, you know, if they grabbing you and you and they, you got your hands stretched out. So guys that had that leverage knew how to use that leverage. They could bull you. Jason Taylor was like, but people underestimated me. Right, as, as underestimated. He had a great one-arm push. He knew how to use leverage. He knew how to do oh, pass rush. Wow. So Sean, Ma- Sean Mammon, when back when he was real good. So it, you know, it was it's guys like that that knew knew how to rush, knew 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 when to rush okay. because they take they take turns too. When they they sometimes they trying to get you from the other side, and this side is to, to sleep you or, or or they switch it up. So they know when to rush and they know how to mix it up. Where they know when 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 this guy it's your turn to turn on the juice, and, and that guy is not going as hard. So they pick their spots, and they know how to know how to bring it. Uh, oh. Ken Harvey. So it might yeah. be a particular game. Ken Harvey was a tough, had a good year in 94, 95. He gave me some problems. So it's just it might not always be the all-pro guy. It's just a guy that's a real good football player. And every week when you get a reputation, they're going to try you. They're gonna try right. That and you listen. You you named some outstanding guys. I remember every every single one of those guys. So you you didn't get to the Hall of Fame by accident. You went up against some 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 pretty. And it's it's refreshing to hear you like you said. You wasn't worried about the speed guy. It was more so because you had good feet. You was worried about a guy trying to get into you because you yes. knew you had you knew you had to uh, anchor down. And exactly. make sure you, yeah, you didn't get dropped back in, in the quarterback's uh, lap. Exactly. Gotcha, gotcha. And then, and, then, and then later in my career, in New Orleans, we had the real mm-hmm. good year in 2000 when we lost uh, the running back. Ricky got hurt. Mm-hmm. Jeff Blake got hurt. Joe Horn got hurt in the playoffs. Then it was running back by committee. 
but the offensive the defense line carried that team. And when I got to Kansas City, you know, we we I, I played with some studs all across that line. So Will uh, you Bill and Will Shield, uh, Casey Wigman. So in KC, it, it, Jason Dunn, the big tight end with another. Line. So when I got to KC, you know, it made my job a lot easier because all of us could get out and run in space and play. So Kansas City was a lot of fun those four years because I played with better players. When you got a revolving door of guards beside you some of them years or a revolving door of quarterbacks, right. you're going to have a tough year. Oh, man, even the running backs you had, man, you had – man, when you talk about Kansas City, I start smiling. Oh, I, 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 Larry Johnson. <laughs> I remember. Well, remember when we played in Atlanta. We, Atlanta, in 04, we were having a down year. Atlanta came in there with the number one rush defense in the country. And uh, we, we we scored eight rushing touchdowns on the one game. Ooh. Yeah, we got out them pretty good. Well, well you know, down here for us. Well, listen, I remember when you guys pulled that running play. I don't know what you call it, but when you guys pulled, it didn't matter left or right. But when you yeah. guys pulled, ooh. yeah, <laughs> the truck or the toss sweep, yeah, yeah, it was it was all the stoppers. Uh, uh, listen, that that play right there was one of those plays, and, and I'm sure you remember. That was one of those plays that it didn't even matter if the defense knew it was coming. It was no, they couldn't stop it. You can't, can't stop it <laughs> because because the, this is the problem. All of us could run in space, not as much on the right tackle side. So if you overplayed me, I'm coming down with the three. Brian is pulling. Casey's right. always pulling. He was undersized center. Right. Will's pulling to the right. So. All of us could run in space, so that 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 created problems for you. And Casey was always getting out, getting out on the edge of the pulling center. Now, when we played that three four defense, and you had somebody like Ted Washington, and he's man up on him, Ooh. he gonna give him problems because Ted was a big. Can't move, Ted. Can't move, Ted. Ted. Exactly. <laughs> Ted six seven, you know three three seventy three eighty. You ain't moving, Ted. So that would give give Casey problems. Because he had to stay there and block him head up sometimes. So when it was a four three three, it was a different game. Oh wow. So let me yeah. let me let me let me ask you this. Um what do you think um the players today, what do you think that they're missing? Uh it it, it could be off the field, on the field. What do you think that when you look at players sometimes and 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 they're getting in. Uh, I don't. I don't want to say trouble far as off the field, but like either trouble in the locker room, trouble contracts, whatever. It is. What What do you think that they're missing? I think, you know, I think it's a lot more ego involved. I think these players have the personalities, a lot more money involved. Mm -hmm. And as far as on the field, they don't get to practice together as much. We were in camp for five weeks. Gotcha. They They don't get as much. They do the OTA, but they don't get in the pads as much. So the continuity in the same, they developed that during the football season where we worked out on that in training camp because they can't do as much in the pads like we used right. to be able to do. So I think that's hurting them as far as development too. And you remember guys started getting injured a lot when they yep. went to that field turf a lot. They started getting – they had to adjust. Guys were hurting their Achilles and stuff. And, and playing on that grass really helped me when I got to Kansas City and got off that turf. But – you know, I, I just think it's a lot of money and ego involved. Again, social media. And these guys are getting caught up in uh, – sometimes it turns more involved in about your platform and your okay. and, and, and how right. many followers you got more right. so than what got you there. And that's playing – sport. you you got there playing football, a la Antonio Brown learning right now. Yeah. So he had to figure out, do, do you want to be a social media star or do you want to be a football player? Got you. The football gotcha. what's got what's gonna get all this going. So you need right. to be a football player first. Uh, that's great. That's great. That's great. And my last question uh, for you is, how was it? What was your feelings? What was your thoughts uh, when the big announcement came down and and you were announced go, you were going into the Hall of Fame? And then what was it like that day when you were actually being inducted? into the Hall of Fame? It was, it was very special for me. Well, first of all, you know, my the way a lot, a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot of the outstanding football players, look at Jerry, Jerry Rice, come from the smaller schools, weren't the highly recruited guys and had to go get it. So that right. was special coming from Louisiana Tech, going top 10. Bradshaw was the only pick higher than me in La Tech history. Yep, 
you know, which in the 1970 draft. But uh, my dad playing at Michigan State and being hurt and not being able to play football at the college level the way he wanted to, mm-hmm. but he went back and took care of his family and became a dentist in Arkansas. So him inducted me. My family being there, knowing that Rolf name is going to be enshrined in our Hall of Fame forever, is special. So, I mean, it was just getting that call, going up there to the uh, to the Super Bowl doing the coin toss, and then going to Canton, Ohio with my family and everybody being able to celebrate yeah. with me, my college teammates. You know, when, it's, when, when you get in the hall, everybody celebrates with you. So at that time, it's, it's more about everybody having a good time, everybody enjoying it. And then for when, when, when we're long gone, anybody can go in that museum and see us there. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's what, and by that time, they're going to have videos and, uh, you know, real live interviews and people talking. So who knows what's, what it's going to be like in the next 30, 40 years, but, but uh, it's going to be special that uh, your name gets to live on. And like you said, my family name, like you said, going, being involved in the, in the football, and hopefully we get to go up there this year. I haven't missed a year since I got enshrined, and a few okay. of my cracks are gone already. Dolan's wow. gone. Cortez yeah. is gone. Yeah. And Jack Butler's gone. But Dolman and Cortez, you know. That was shocking with Dolman. That was shocking yeah. with Dolman. That, yeah, that. Dolman, when it was brain cancer, you know. So wow. And that brain, yeah, it was, that, it was glioblastoma. So, I mean, when they hit him, I was, I was with him that New Year's. In Atlanta, he lived in Atlanta. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask back. you. Yeah, yeah, he, he lived in Atlanta. And then I came back, and he was at Emory, and they did the surgery. So, uh, you know, Do- I mean, Doman and I had some battles. Another one that was ahead, that that was tough to play against when he was with the Forty yeah. mm-hmm. uh, uh You know, so I mean, it's uh, you can't take things for granted, man. Especially now with everything going on in the world, it's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's serious, man. I mean, I hope this, I hope this. Uh, my daughter just graduated. I, w- I hope this this generation, after that social media generation, mm-hmm. can get it and understand what things are all about. So I hope this brings everything. I hope this brings people back closer together with everything that's going on right now. I would think so. I hope so. You talking about back in the day? You uh, and I had I said this to my daughters. You remember back in the day when TV went off? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah it, just, it just went black at three in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate you uh, taking time out uh, and giving us an opportunity here at Rap Life Sports uh, to have a moment with you and sit down. Uh, I'm no working problem. on something else, and I um, I want to bring you back on the show again. Uh, what I'm working on is probably get you and a couple other you know top level uh, offensive linemen. And, and mix it in, you know, uh, with some uh, defensive linemen. And just you guys kind of share some stories facing each other from a, you know, offensive lineman perspective versus, you know, a def- defensive line perspective. So, okay, we, we, yeah, so we hope to have you uh, on the show again. Once again, I thank you uh, for gracing us with your time. Um, thank you for being the class act and the example that you've always been. And once again, thank you for coming on Rap Life Sports. No problem. And you remember when uh, people, people, brother, won't say that, but MTV first started watching uh-huh. all them other videos, the cars, and all those videos. And then coming home on Sunday, you want to get home to watch Soul Train because Soul yeah. Train was going out to church on Sunday. Well, you know yeah. what's so funny? I'm watching the uh, the show now that they oh, I'm have. The show now, yeah, I watch yeah. the show now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a good show, isn't it? It's real good. It, it's a good show. It take it it takes you back. It takes you back. Yeah. And you know, you know what we what what we need to do too is kind of um also what we'll do in that segment when I bring you back on is is kind of let's you know start talk about some things uh that's off the field a little bit you know, like you were talking about the show you enjoy that way the the people the fans can get a chance to kind of get to know who who you know. Uh, William Rolfe is not just the football player, but the gotcha. you know, but gotcha. the man, but the man, gotcha. and because gotcha. I think everybody always is just identifying players with the game and not realizing that you you, you was a human being, you was a person first, you just a, yeah. a, a, a man that pl- had the talent to play the game and play it at a high level, but at the end of the day, like you said, you're still a person. So, uh, oh, one quick question, I I I, I was going to let you go, but I, I gotta ask this question. With uh, everything that's going on with the Black Lives Matter movement and everything with uh, going on with our people, 
um, how do you how do you uh, sit down with your kids? How do you how do you process all that and and try to help them to understand, but yet still go forth forward far as by you know uh, helping uh, making progress uh, in this country. You know, that's a good question. I just want them to understand the history and, you know, the history, the Juneteenth, you know, Roswood in uh, Florida right. was another community that, you know, went through the same thing that happened in Tulsa. So, you know, I just think, you know, we need to understand our history and uh, and understand what's going on and, and be respectful of people. And, you know, my thing is I treat people like you want to be treated and, uh, and, uh, you know, I get along with people, and I know where I'm from. I grew up in the South, so I understand growing up in Arkansas, how it is. And, uh, uh, you know, like I said, uh, you know, my dad would tell me stories and stuff that happened, you know, when right. he was a kid. So, you know, you, you just uh, – that's part of our history. You need to understand it. And uh, uh, I think I think people need to understand that. And I think it's time that a lot of this stuff has to be addressed. You don't need to be – shooting, you know, people in the back and the different things that's been going sure. on right. and it hadn't been addressed. Right. You know, like I said, I've been seeing the other videos of brothers getting shot like that. I'm like, why did you need to do that if the guy is barely running through a field away from you and right. you didn't have it, then what's the point of doing that? You know, you don't you don't I wouldn't, you know, you know, the guy the kid had a taser in Atlanta. Yeah. You know, was already fired. I mean why you you know you don't you didn't need to do that. So correct. There, there are situations where they have to understand everybody's human beings and you're not, you know, you don't have to take someone's life. Just like uh, cops are trained to kill. They're not trained to wound, but you know, you know, they, they don't, you don't, I don't know why they have, to, in a lot of instances when some of this stuff is going down, they don't have to kill. And I think that's where, that's where the, the line is, is, you know, you have to do that. And we also have to, as far as black people, make sure that we're doing our things in our community to make sure the, the youth of our community aren't killing ourselves like yeah. in Chicago, like a lot of these cities where that's going on right. a lot. If we need to stop putting into that. So I would think with all that's going on that we would appreciate each other about what you've been through and being able to treat each other with more, with more respect right. because of what we've already been through right. without hurting ourselves. I, amen, man. I've, I've, I've um, I agree with everything that you said. So, um, we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna bring you back on the show. And once again, I thank you for coming on Rap Life Sports. Thank you for your time and and, and everything that you're giving uh, to the game and uh, to this show today. So, I appreciate it, and I'll most definitely be in touch when you know we set that up for another segment okay. for you to come on. No problem.